Hi everyone, I would like to talk briefly to you today about um, normality and abnormality in uh, vivid daydreaming. You are often referred to uh, maladaptive daydreaming uh, when you talk about uh, the ability to engage in very vivid, absorptive, immersive form of uh, fantasy. Um, but this in itself is not a, a pathological form of daydreaming. Most of the people daydream daily. Uh, their minds wander. It's not actually a daydreaming. It's about uh, thinking mostly about um, things to do, about um, what to prepare for dinner, about conversations we've had, about uh, planning something. Um, most people call it daydreaming, but it's actually mind wandering. It is uh, something that happens when uh, one is not um, actually active and focusing on and concentrating on a task. This is an off task sort of mental behavior. Maladaptive daydreaming involves a concentrated effort, um, a mental, uh, an, an, an intentional mental activity that is purposeful. So it's not just mind wandering when one is, uh, when the brain is idle or doing, uh, not requiring it to do anything productive. The form of fantasy that people experience in maladaptive daydreaming is very intense, very vivid, and often involves fantastical stories. But the question is, is that in itself a problem? Is that in itself maladaptive? What does the word maladaptive mean? Maladaptive means actually that it's not adaptive, it's not normal in the sense that it is not conducive to creativity, to productivity. Uh, on the contrary, uh, it uh, is uh, some, some sort of an impairment, an impediment on, on normal functioning. So <clears throat> we're talking about a trait, a trait that people have, and the trait itself is not a problem. Uh, the trait itself provides uh, joy, it provides interest, provides entertainment, provides uh, soothing at times of distress, uh, provides a distraction from um, um, bad feelings or bad memories. And in itself, it's a, it's a, it's a feature of the mind that uh, a small portion of the population has disability, and it is uh, entertaining and useful for many. The issue is that this exact form of daydreaming, that let's call it immersive daydreaming or absorptive daydreaming. Uh, the question is, when does it become maladaptive? In other words, pathological or disorder of daydreaming. That happens when this very rewarding mental activity becomes uh, so uh, enticing that people prefer to do it rather than doing something else and invest a lot of time fantasizing at the expense of other responsibilities that they may have. So even the duration of time one engages in this form of immersive daydreaming is not an issue. The issue is, I mean, and let's adopt what the, the, what the DSM considers the criteria, the hallmarks of a disorder. Number one, does it cause distress? If there's no distress, then, uh, you know, in all likelihood, it's not a problem, although, uh, granted, there are some mental conditions like being uh, hypomanic or manic um, or some forms of, of psychotic disorders that do not generate distress. People don't even have an awareness that uh, they are, uh, there's something not quite right. But most, most problems, most disorders incur some, some discomfort, some um, 
frustration, some, uh, some worry, uh, change of mood uh, that, is, uh, that is distressful and difficult. So distress is one criteria of, by which you can decide whether the, your, your form of immersive daydreaming, if you have this trait, is moving towards the pathological end of the spectrum. But there's another important criteria to consider, and that is to what extent is this mental behavior impairing an important area of functioning? To what extent does it impede, interfere with the performance of your daily tasks or to achieving your goals in life? If your daydream does not interfere, impede, or compromise your functioning and does not cause distress, to the two criteria that are the hallmarks of a disorder, mental disorder, then you don't have maladaptive daydreaming. <clears throat> you have the trait of immersive daydreaming or absorptive daydreaming, that form of fantasy that gives you a sense of presence and emotional feelings that is a, a, a gift, a trait perhaps to enjoy. And like a good glass of wine, you can enjoy it in moderation and savor its complexity and its, uh, its, its uh, aromas and its bouquets and its uh, flavors. And that's if you drink a, a glass of wine, even every day, that would be fine. And that could make you a wine connoisseur. But if you drink a bottle of wine every day, that, that can really not only damage your liver, but also interfere with, uh, with your judgment and with your functioning, uh, because you may not be completely there or when intoxicated, and that may develop into alcoholism. So we can see that every trait uh, can lie on a continuum between the normal, to the abnormal, if it is excessive, it create, creates distress and impairment or maladaptation. So when uh, one discusses uh, and considers one's mental life, uh, one's mental activity, <clears throat> um, if you are among those endowed with this uh, capacity to be completely immersed in your daydreams and you have access to this virtual reality that is so accessible and lies there between your ears in your mind and you do it in moderation and you ent get entertainment and pleasure from it and you do it in moderation then you don't have a problem it's not maladaptive and don't call it maladaptive daydream call it something else I, I suggest that what you can call it immersive daydream or absorptive daydream and only if uh, this mental habit becomes excessive to the point where um, he, it interferes with some important area of functioning like the ability to concentrate, the ability to study, the ability to work effectively, your social life. Your, only when that happens, <clears throat> then you might want to be evaluated for maladaptive daydreaming and consider some form of treatment. I hope I clarified this issue, the difference between normal and abnormal immersive daydreaming, and goodbye for now.